needed to um, to undo the buttons until we were live, and then people could see me. There we go, Bryce. That's how we're starting off the panel. Don't Who knows where we end up if this is where we start? Lit. <laughs> lit made of donuts. It's donut, donut lit. <laughs> oh man, we watched. Oh, we're we're in a Walmart, Donald you guys. So good right now. I don't even know what state. And there was this kid who was wearing a shirt in which lit was spelled in donuts. And I was like, dude, <laughs> where did that come from? He's like, I don't know. Like, what do you? You're wearing a shirt where lit spelled in. Like, you can't just put that on. Like, yeah, there's right. you have to know where it came. From. And he's like, I don't know, man. My sister gave it to me. I was like, I turned to his sister. I was like, where did you get that? She's like, I don't remember. I was like, you know what? That's it, guys. I'm making it a thing. Lit in donuts. It's donut lit. So, yeah. Um, that's where this, this shirt came from. Lit from, in donuts. Lit in donuts. Okay. I can get behind Dude, that. I can get how behind are that. you guys? Oh. Michael, you know? I know your week was just nuts. I know your week was just stupid. Yeah. Did you see some cool things? Did you see beautiful? Did you ever stop or did you just foot on the ground? You know, so it, we spent about four days driving out here from Dallas to LA. Okay. Uh, and because it's it's about a 22, 26 hour oh, that's drive. It? Oh, that's easy. Oh, that's it? Jeez. Okay. Um, you went from well, North we... Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 39. Oh, it's, oh, God. I've, oh, it's, God. It's like 39. Oh, um. No, so we drove, but um, we took about four days to get here just because, you know, traveling with the dogs and yeah. you know, had to get them plenty of time so they wouldn't have to be in the car all, yeah. like, 20 hours. Yep. And um, But it was cool. We we got to drive through, like, a lot of beautiful landscapes. I mean, it was cool. And we got chased by a winter storm. Like, we almost got stuck in Albuquerque where, like, it got, oh. like, ice and snow the next day. And, in fact, it held up our movers. So we got here early. And um, so we got to see pretty much every climate, every <laughs> like, desert, oh, forest, trees, mountains, snow, awesome. rain. Heat, all of it. It's all of it. It's that like we're sounds... just driving through a little lab of ecosystems. That's cool. Did you stop at Holy Cow in Albuquerque and get a burger? Uh, no, we did not. <laughs> we stopped. We stopped at the hotel and we <laughs> we we got we postmated something. We're like, do you go, you want to go anywhere? No, it's a pandemic. Every, anytime someone's like, we should go do this. Pandemic, dude. All right. <laughs> and we're like, oh yeah, oh, all yeah, right. We'll just stay here. So all we... right. Oh man! You guys in the chat, we can see your chat. We can see you. Yes, oh, we were just oh, hi. That's a good lead-in. So, welcome everyone to the free panel. This is where I get to catch up with my friends and find out what they're up to. Some people <laughs> are first-time guests, and I've never met them before, and I have all the questions in the world. And then what we do is we take all questions on the VIP panel. So free panel is just me getting to ask what I want, which gosh forbid, this anime is so <laughs> freaky. I'm, I'm excited. Um, sometimes I'm really tempted to talk about the anime in the free panel. And then sometimes I'm like, all right, I need to know about your life. So you need to fill me mm -hmm. in. Um, okay. So this is both. So feel free. Uh, I saw a lot of you get to meet each other in chat earlier. You should definitely meet each other for anyone. Uh, so anyone that's on this panel, that has bought a ticket, any ticket gets you into VIP. So any hangout, any autograph, any personalized message gets you into the VIP. Please make sure you request VIP because there will be a short 30 minute break from this mm. panel. And then we're jumping right into the fire and taking so many questions. It's not even, we're never going to go to sleep. So that's the VIP <laughs> panel. Um, oh. We'll let you, we'll let you take a break, Michael. I know you're tired from lifting. <laughs> and fire extinguisher? No. Okay, right? Okay. I so you get it. Okay. The fire. He's got a fire extinguisher. You can put that thing out. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, someone doesn't expect this panel to go well. Rachel. <laughs> no, it's going to be. It's, it's not to put so out any fire. Lit. It's, not it's going to be out. so lit. I brought the extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> beow, 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 beow. Okay. I don't know what it was. Brad, where, where do you have this energy? Please. I feel like. I feel like you're hogging all the energy. Give me some. May, I need it right now. Maybe I have he's so born many with boxes it. to live. <laughs> <laughs> I told you should have told me. I would have helped you move. Oh, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you said that that 22 hour drive was nothing. You could make it. I was right? gonna yeah, say, you can make it. 
Could yeah. we, I could do the, I could, oh, let's see. I mean, I'll if you want me to, pizza. are you going to be doing on, on Sunday? I will, I will do the dang and Rampa <laughs> event tomorrow and drive all night long and help you move in. If, if that will make you, I'll do it. I'll, I, I will know. freaking do it. I know. Okay. Oh, I just heard something fall upstairs. <laughs> it's the ghost. It's just your, <laughs> the ghost in your, okay, Bryce. You did you get? I feel like you went somewhere, Bryce. Did you go someplace cool? Did you get to see um, something cool in America with your family? I feel like you you disappeared off the map for like seven I mean, days. I've never driven that far, or done like a cross country type of drive. But you know, a, a far trip for me is a little bit south of my house to take family <laughs> photos at the beach. That was, oh. a, that was an adventure. Okay. So did you just go for photos or did you go to like hang out and see some things? We made it a, a little escape, got, uh, got, uh, went down to Laguna. If you guys ever have the opportunity to go to Laguna, Laguna beach, Niguel. Mm. Or, yeah. Yeah. it's very, very beautiful, right. You know, right next to the water and, um, just got away for a couple days and hung out over there by the beach where you're not near too many people. Um, and it was really great to just hang out with the family. Very cool. Okay, Josh, I heard in, in one of your conversations, you are a pilot. You want to be a pilot. You, can you I want to your... be a, Yeah, want to be a pilot. Longtime fan of piloting and aviation and stuff like that. I, I My grand, my uh, uncle for on my mom's side took me into a Cessna 172 when I was like you just, you eight years hurt. old. And I, I already been doing flight simming and stuff by that time. So I already knew how to fly yeah. the thing and he he taught me you know, just kind of more of the the actual intricacies the, of what it takes when you're up in the air like everything you have to keep track of like some of the basics of atc yeah. uh communications and stuff and like i just i fell in love with it but like when i was a kid i was i was diagnosed uh, as having epilepsy and that ended up being a false mm. diagnosis years later but i thought as a kid well i could never do this because uh, they they if military and uh, uh, FAA if uh, you uh, if you have epilepsy even mentioned on your yeah, on your you medical record like, then, like no, you're, no. you're out but mm. like it ended up being a false diagnosis um, oh, but I, I had already I had already gone into this career by that point and so I'd off to other stuff but um, yeah uh, 2020's uh, given me the opportunity to look at some other things so yeah I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> Now, next year, I'm I'm looking at hopefully it kind That's of depends on how so stuff cool. up, whether okay. or not we're able to, to stay at to, to keep right. the house in or not. But yeah. like, well, once we figure that out, then yeah, I'll probably be going into what's called the uh, ATP, which is just a uh, airline training program. They've uh, group cool. been around since the '80s. Hmm. Uh, that uh, yeah, it's just kind of like a catch-all, fast track, nine-month okay. intensive program. They've got a couple of uh, yeah places here in dallas where i live that i can go and uh do the do a lot of the basic stuff yeah. before i have to go out probably to fort lauderdale or near there um to do my uh, simulation hours okay. and the actual flight tests and stuff like that but yeah we'll see at the end of it the dream is be a commercial airline pilot and then whatever else in my free time right on so, dude yeah. right on well good that's good. so cool he's a pilot yeah. and he got his pilot license before his driver's license so it's in so high awesome school, dude to go up he needed training hours so we used to go up and fly in one of those cessnas you yeah. know up there flying that's around so cool. it was amazing yeah it's it's a it's a whole other it, it's a whole other experience when you can have a when you get to fly in like one of those smaller you know, that, that kind of personal flight experience, dude, it's life changing. Now I what's it, really man. great about this, Josh, I love this. I have to say this, but I look forward to the day, like when I'm on like a really nice commercial jet and you're the pilot and you come on and use your experience to scare the bejesus out of everybody. <laughs> like make us yeah. think that there's eight people in the cockpit. Like what's yeah. all the there? <laughs> <laughs> Just like get on there, dude. Because I mean, I'll be, voices, I'll be watching the passenger manifest yeah. like a right? hawk. Sir. Pilot voices like. are so, I don't know. I mean, we all fly a lot, right? And do, do yeah. you guys do this thing where you like, you kind of judge the pilot by their delivery? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, Josh! Do you remember that time when we were making fun of the yeah, flight? Yeah, I was just thinking of it. <laughs> oh man, you guys we were being best. such children. We were being <laughs> Michael and I. Whenever we get together, we turn into eight-year-olds. Like <laughs> it, it's one of my favorite things about 
getting we to were, hang out with Michael. And so we, we were, just, we yeah, were we at were, the gate and we were just messing around. And even before we got on the plane and one of the passengers was across the way, she was like, are y'all actors? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nailed it. Oh, my God. Oh, it was good yeah. times. Good times. That's so yeah, fun. Man. Oh, okay. This anime is... I, th I think that I just... There's so much Junko at a convention. You go to any convention, and all I knew was that this chick was so popular it wasn't even funny. So I, I got the idea. I called Gilbert. I'm like... Because I, I was looking at your your behind the voice actor page, Bryce, for, for something. I don't know what it was. Probably because I don't want to misspell anything. And, like, there's nothing worse than misspelling a hashtag. You lose all the benefits and you look like a <laughs> moron because the fans are like, that's not even how you spell that. So I'm, like, looking at, at all the roles you played. And I was like, I have never heard Bryce talk about Danganronpa. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can land Jamie. And then I'm going to work down the list. And then I'm going to surprise them all and be like, oh, oh, yeah, Bryce is on that panel with you guys. And just, like, throw you in there. And then I, w I started watching the anime, and I'm, like, all weed whacking. Because I, I listen – I do anime like an <laughs> audio book. And I was like, I swear to gosh, that's Bryce's voice. <laughs> and then, like, you just kept talking and talking. And I was like, I think Bryce is the main character in this anime. And after three episodes, and I was like, I texted you. I was like, you're the main character in Dan and Rob, aren't you? <laughs> like – like, how has that role been for you? Like, how did it fly under the... I feel like all I, he I hear about Meliodas, Cat Noir, Aaron Yeager, but I've, I, I'm have i just experienced... How did this come about? How has it flown under the radar? Tell me about... The and you're in the video game and the anime. Right, yeah. I'm surprised it's flown under the radar yeah. because, um, you know, while there might not be as many Danganronpa fans as some of you know, some of the, the mainstream shows or other shows, um, the, the Danganronpa fans are very dedicated, very enthusiastic, yep. and I love them so much. Um, so my uh, introduction to Danganronpa, I started with the video games, and um, similar to other roles, I auditioned for Nagi um, and got called back and then eventually was cast. And that was such a cool role to play because coming yeah. in, I knew nothing about the series. And I mean, as you can see, even from the anime, it's crazy. It's it's like this murder mystery. And um, yeah. working on the video game, Naegi is the one that's finding the clues and solving these things and going into these trials and, and figuring this stuff out. So as I was delivering those lines and seeing them for the first time, it was like I was watching this movie unfold in my head. Cause there's no picture as you're working on the video game also. So you just have to envision like what all these really extravagant, super high school level characters look like. So I was imagining all this mm -hmm. crazy stuff as I was solving all these insane murders and it was so much fun, so much fun. So, so you didn't have visuals to act off of in the game? No, 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 no way. Visuals were just working off of the script. And in fact, we worked really quickly, so we don't get the script ahead of time. Yes. It's when we're working on the anime. You have no idea what you're getting into when you go in. <laughs> you just live in the moment and experience these oh, man. And, and trials and insanity. Okay. Um, when they put the visual to it, then what was like, what when you saw what he looked like? Like, did that fit it? Were you like, oh, whew, nailed that? Like, no, the, <laughs> the thing that, that struck me so most, uh, like, so much and so deeply was not the way the characters looked, but the way that the murders looked, like the blood being pink. Pink, like, yeah. Like the style of Danganronpa just stands out so much. Mm -hmm. And the way the character design is, like it's so cool and so unique um, and absolutely love it. And um, Very cool. I, I've been really fortunate. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've said this multiple times, like my characters are super high school level luck. And I feel like the luck of my characters has literally passed on to me. Oh, yeah. And I'm the only oh, actor yeah. that in every iteration of Danganronpa between yeah. the games and the yeah. anime. I, that was another yeah, thing. That's that awesome. Luck. It is. Well, because we're, I feel like the story that I heard was that you just happened to be in town doing Attack on Titan and you heard the Danganronpa and you're like, oh, dude, I totally play in the video game. And they're like, everyone like turns their chair. 
No, I mean, not quite that. Okay. All right. Actually, when, when, <laughs> and a little less dramatic. This was a while back, but um, when they were running auditions at Funimation um, before things were kind of remote, um, you would go in and there'd be a booklet and you'd choose what character you want and you read for your character. Um, oh, we have another guest here. I know. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get. I know it's cutting, it's cutting out so bad for me. And she's gone. I believe she's. I think she's frozen. She has a super high school level. <laughs> and she looks so happy while she's frozen. She's I know. Very happy. It's it's she's frozen she's not frozen. Smile. She's just in a very, very good mood. Yeah. Sometimes you get frozen. And you're like. Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! I told totally you frozen. Kara, we Why? hear you. Can you, I hear you. If you can hear us, then we can just ignore your picture. If you, you can, can hear, hear me, us, I'm just. Oh, we can totally hear you. Not, you. Am I frozen in like what? You're super frozen. Yeah, you're like. <laughs> I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna exit and come back in and see if it gets better. Okay, we'll see when you get back. You guys, yeah, this is the new game. When she comes back and she's freezing, we all have to like try oh, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah. oh my god. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm just. <laughs> oh man, we're such trolls. Okay. Oh man. Okay, Josh, did you? Um, did you, so. So was there an attack on Titan that was going on? Because Josh, you and Bryce are like, I know that everyone doesn't record together, which is, by the way, you're, it's a credit to your acting that we can't tell that you're not in the same, because there's so much chemistry. In, um, so did you did you guys run into the hall while uh, Attack on Titan was going on? Like, how did that work, Josh? We ran into each other a couple of times during Attack on Titan, but I think Bryce was like... Uh, there was, I remember for like the very beginning of season one, you were in town, you like, you were in Dallas proper, uh, a fairly good amount. Like, and, and then a lot of it after, like afterwards you, you were recording from LA and then I don't think I saw you again in person other than conventions until you were recording almost until almost the end of the second season. I don't yeah. think I actually saw you in town again. So it was, it was very infrequent that we did get to, to run into each other in the halls, uh, recording Titan. Uh, but, uh, they did happen very, it, it was always really fun when it did happen. That's for dang sure. Hey, Yes, and you look like you're moving. Yay! Yay. Hi. Yes. Am I here? <laughs> you're here. Yeah. Oh my god, you guys! I'm having like Halloween level of internet fright. <laughs> oh, no. Nothing is working today. I don't know what is going on in my world, but nothing is working today. Oh my! <laughs> yes. So I'm here. Hi. I love Hi. your faces. I miss your faces. We miss you too. It's been so long. Oh, oh. I know. Oh, you guys just missed it. My kid just came streaking through with a piece of pizza. Like, oh yeah, I, get it, get it, mama. Chaos. Get it, mom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm late. I'm late because I had to wipe a booty. So. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Mother, <laughs> real These are world that stuff. Don't happen real at old, old school conventions, but boy, in, so the, much. in the land of virtual, yeah, anything. Goes. Yeah. Oh, did you guys we, in the beginning when this started happening? There were some like really epic fails. Like um, <laughs> there was a dude in like Spain that his mistress walked by while he was reporting on the news in his wife's <laughs> car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're having a bad oh day when? Oh, oh my god, that's yeah. really wow. funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there was some in the beginning before, like people like, and, and it was funny. In the, I don't know how you guys, but everyone was like scared to like go to these meetings. Like people who, who like jumped on it were like sending links out, like come, come do this thing, and so we would like send out like a, a Google invite to like have a cast of a show, like come talk. And then like people would like have their cameras off and then, and then some people were like, um, can we do this on the phone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then like, it's been so long, you know, now people are like, uh, do you remember that thing you were talking about six months ago? Is that still okay? Did that, that work out? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Did Oh, so glad. No, I, I'm excited. I feel like it's made the world smaller. Kara, have you have you experienced any kind of like shrinking of your world? Oh, good lord! Yes, the answer is yes. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So I Much I shrink. feel like um, 
So I was already, I, I've been working from my home studio for 14 years. So I didn't have like a big work transition. Um, I'm kind of still doing what I've always done. What's new to me is like, oh, I'm going to do it with a five-year-old chilling out with me all the time and interrupting my sessions. And like, that's been this. And then I also quarantined with my fiance and he has a four-year-old little girl. So now it's like, we, two of them. yeah. So I mean, there's two, two adults, <laughs> but he's, he's working like crazy. Cause um, he yeah. actually, oh, he oversees production yeah. for Funimation. Um, he's one of the people making sure that everything <laughs> is running and happening. Um, and so we have now there's two children and two adults and he, half the time he's working in a bedroom while I'm working. In you just have to run. And, you have to run faster and, than the kids run. Chaos. It's <laughs> chaos. But, but we finally started figuring things out and we got a teacher. Yeah. Um, so the kids now have someone that helps them during the day, but yeah, it, everything just, it's, it's like this, a real world where you, and I know everyone's experiencing this, where you can get in your bubble and like, you're everything's good in your little bubble and then you're like oh god i miss other humans like you see a friend you haven't seen in a while like i'm seeing all of your faces and i'm like oh my god i want to hug every one of your necks so bad oh um, yay same same yeah. that's awesome oh. okay michael you wrote d the script for dying and rampa am i correct in uh for for the anime yes for for the for the three seasons of the anime i okay. was uh, the lead adaptive writer so when and you say three do you mean like part one of of part three and then part two of part three yes yes okay it's all you yes well because if there parts. was the if there was a season two out there because that's that's the the jib in the anime is that right there's only the video game for dying and rampa two so right. I went to watch like a 30 minute YouTube to explain, to fill me in on what happened in two. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So I wrote, uh, yeah, I wrote the, uh, all the anime, all the anime, all yes. the anime. And, uh, along with Patrick Seitz, um, who's really been my writing partner for God, years and years and years. We worked together on a lot of stuff What? and yeah. I love yeah. Patrick. And he's so great. I love, I love, I miss, I miss writing with Patrick. But yeah, so I got to work on it. And um, I also play the the principal of the school. Who's yeah, like, you know, yeah, in the first yeah. season, I, I play a box of bones they find in a closet. Yes. Uh, spoilers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I have like four lines or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so I got to I got to do the adaptive writing. It's one of my favorite things I've ever gotten to write because it's really? so well, because it was super challenging. Um, Josh has, has written for a number of years as well, so he can tell you uh, that like writing big ensemble pieces like that, where there's like a huge cast of characters that all have distinct voices, and that uh, you know, and and adding this element of like, oh, one of them is a murderer this episode or whatever, um, there was just a lot of fun. Uh, very, uh, it's very challenging. It's very different than writing um, other sorts of shows where there's like a core cast of maybe four or five people oh. and then a lot of ancillary characters. Yeah, but this was this was a show that. A lot. Pretty everybody much, matters. Like, everybody has their moment Every, to shine. Yep. Everybody has mm -hmm. yep. has their their screen time, and then you and then you have Junko, who's fifteen characters in one. Um, so I felt like I was writing Les Misérables. I felt oh. like I was like, oh, it's a cast of eighty, <laughs> and uh, and it was super fun because especially as I got going because we were already doing uh, it was a broadcast dub. The, the first season was a broadcast dub. Well, they all were, but uh, the broadcast dub was one of the first broadcast dubs I was asked to write. I think it was only the second thing I wrote in that format, which was very challenging, uh, very a lot of time constraints. Imagine writing a murder mystery under pressure, but um, <laughs> imagine but solving to, it under pressure, right? And solving it, yes. I'm like, oh god. But um, luckily, that's kind of my jam. I love murder mysteries. Oh, it's kind of oh, my little thing. I'm, I love, I love, I love I reading, reading like, like you know, yes, cozy yes. mysteries and stuff. So I feel like it was my. I was, yeah. Was, did they bring my that? real house? So What's was that? that one of the ones that you got to, so my understanding of script writing is that essentially the season is kind of like, here's what's available for the season. And then everybody the, does Mortal Kombat until there's a winner declared and then the winner <laughs> would pick which script they were. Like, uh, no, back in those, it's a little, it's different now, but it, back in those days, you know, a thousand years ago before 2020. Fight Club? Um, it was... <laughs> Well, we had a head writer who would get okay. the, the assignments in and be like, oh, hey, cool. Josh, you're great at, at fantasy sci-fi. Okay. This will be your show. Okay. Tatum, you're great at murder mysteries. Write this, you know, okay. and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, I was assigned the show, and I knew nothing about it. I'd never played the video game. Really? So I had to really dip in and do a lot of research because it's a very, you know, uh, reference-heavy show, especially yeah. to, to yeah. the previous incarnations. Yep. And um, 
But one of the great things about writing in broadcast dub format, as stressful as it was, is that I got to know and hear everyone in it. The first, I could watch the first episode kind of almost in real time. Like it would be recorded by the time I was working on the third script. And so I could hear Josh and Bryce mm. and Kara and everyone That's else and be awful. like, oh God, because awesome. And so I could write okay. to, to, to what I, to their strengths as, as I understood okay. them, so to speak, which is a great gift as a writer. Because in the old days, we just have to write an entire season and be like, right. here you go director, have fun casting this. I hope the, I hope the actors know what I was trying to do. Um, Mm -hmm. But it feels more collaborative when uh, under okay. the broadcast dub process because okay. you get kind of immediate feedback and it was so much fun. I've written, man, I've written stuff for Bryce and Josh <laughs> going back a while and it's so Long I know time. their voices really well. It was a great thing. I, I love getting to know Kara and, and her vocal style and it was really fun and it was, it was just a good, you know, it was a good time. And the show was right up my alley and you talk about uh, Junko being like a hugely popular character. There's yeah. a reason for that. I think she's one of the best villains in an anime period. Like yeah. she is the Joker and Harley Quinn yes. and Cruella DeVille yes. all rolled into all one. Like all she's that. just so great. And, and Jamie, who happens to be, you know, one of my dearest friends, um, just nailed it. And so when I yeah. was writing it, I was like, look, you're going to come back in like a really big way <laughs> in the last episode. And then you're going to have a lot to do in the next season. You know? <laughs> and so I was like, so I just want you to know, I've known you for 20 years. I'm going to make this as hard as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and it, she was like, this is hard, whatever, Tatum. <laughs> so, Bryce, was it, um, I, I felt like when I, when I watched the playthrough of the second video game, which you voiced, so you are much more familiar than pro any of us in terms of, like, the, the video game, I felt like what I saw from you was so different from Danganronpa 1 that I was like, no wonder they, like, I, I felt like he was the villain in the second hmm. video game. Well, Nagito is not Naegi. They are two very right. different people. Very different. Um, and uh, I, I, I feel like, and sorry if you guys have not played through V2 and don't know much about Nagito, but I feel like at the beginning, it almost tricks you. Right. It's like, is this Naegi in some strange other universe? Is he okay. growing up to right. some okay. a little different? Um, but because he, he's he's a little friendly at first and until you get to know him and then um <laughs> yeah and then he's a little different yeah yeah like i feel like uh, i was like i thought i knew what was going on and then you jump into v2 and i was like i think this guy's crazy like he was the juco almost like in his head it made mm. sense but it didn't make sense if you were on the island with him yeah i i felt like i was playing Joker <laughs> as i was playing Nagi. Okay. A lot okay. of those scenes, and it was really fun to be able to do that, especially because I would play Nagi in the same sessions. So oh, I, we man. would record the, the Nagi lines, and then we would go right into Nagito lines, and I was able to do that in both the game and in the anime. So Crazy. it was really, really great. Um, and at, at the end of the anime, I got to talk to myself for just one second, and I, I made <laughs> <laughs> I really made it worth it. I, I snuck a little blooper in there, oh. so I made my... I went off script and it might have snuck into the show and made it to the Blu-ray. <laughs> nice. That's nice. awesome. Do you, I feel like I'm always trying to play which of these is really Bryce. And I feel like I keep <laughs> changing it, but I've, I felt kitty toe for a long time, but now that I'm experienced, I've, I've got dang and Rampa like, dude, Naegi, you're, do you feel that kinship? Like he's so chill and, he, and he's always, he's like, he'll be bothered for like a second and then I'll be like, I got a plan. Do you, did you feel typecast I, in that role? I mean, I don't know. I, I try to find something about every character that I play that I can relate to in some way. I find some, some like, something in me that's similar to that character, even if it's a character like a Nagito, where that's not me. Um, but I, I find some way, something deep down to relate. Okay. Do you guys do that as well? Do you mm -hmm. try to find like some aspect that you can um, apply like some some authenticity of yourself mm -hmm. to it? Yeah, that's, I, that's how I always say I do it as well, is I'm like, this is, I see the characters as like, oh, that's the the part of me that's like this, or even if it's something really weird, like I don't have a lot of, you know, 
seven-year-old boy in me, but at the same time, I can be like, okay, so this is probably the more mischievous, young-hearted uh, yeah. side of myself. Deal. Yeah, I do the same thing. I try to find like, how do I connect with this character in some way? And something, because I think that also helps like with the acting for me is, mm -hmm. is to say, oh, this is something I've experienced or, oh, this is something I can draw on to bring yeah. like that next level to my acting. And Josh, with your character, I felt like in the first little bit, I was like, that guy can die next. And then <laughs> you're always the best one to, to die next, right? right? He's and like, then for whatever ridiculous reason, maybe the universe is just out to piss you off for that day, but the dirt <laughs> survives all the time. But he and he changes just so much. Do what? Sorry. I, I felt like he changed. I felt like this douchebag that I needed, he could be next. And I was like, oh, now I now I feel like he's working with Kiri Giri and Naegi. Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. you like, did you like? I felt like because I and, and, I, and I understand that the timeline, like I, I'm still kind of hazy on how the Danganronpa timeline is supposed to take place. <laughs> like, you know, the whole first we all are. Actually, <laughs> but yeah, I'm still all messed up on that myself. But like it did kind of seem like from from what I do. Yeah. From what I did catch, it did seem like maybe if he, he wasn't necessarily helping them specifically as much as their his objectives and their objectives aligned. Oh, um, <laughs> now so like, you know, like, it, yeah, maybe not like, in, not even to the point of like being an alliance of convenience type of thing, but more like a, just a, Oh, uh, they're doing things that help us. So like, we'll keep doing that as long as yeah. it, you know, helps our cause too. Yeah. No, so, I, I that's think the that, that approach. explanation is like, it's, it's so fits. Like, mm. it's not that he like, decided oh let's it's just that it's like okay this is what i want for the world that i live in right now and i'm gonna mm -hmm. live through this experience and so all right you got like because i i swear in in i i can't remember what which episode it was but at one point you were ready to see naegi die and then by the end of the same episode you were like yeah he's right it couldn't possibly be him um and then you fast forward to the end of three, right? Um, <laughs> and you're like, you're the shizzle nizzle. Like you're the <laughs> like you're in charge. You got like a whole army. It's Dude, like, he's got like a flying fortress yeah. or something. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> the last he has all the toys. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's oh, like I'm Batman. You, just I know he's, he's yeah. a bit of a jerk, the character, but I tell you, like he's definitely a character I'd want to be on the good on like I definitely want him on my team. I want to be like, all right, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, I, yeah, cool. And if I know you don't care about me, but if, if my survival is mutually beneficial to you, I know you've got my back. <laughs> right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much him, dude. And yep. Yep. It was, yeah. It was, he, uh, I, I'm trying to think yeah. if anybody yeah. changed as much as, um, I don't, I don't know that anybody in that, cause you, the night you get the whole way. Now I'll tell you what. Michael, I felt mm. not so much that Jin changed, but mm. our understanding of who he was, you know, like even after the first anime. Uh, well, in, in the first anime, he's kind of such a shadowy figure because he doesn't really have much to do. And the implication is like, is he behind this? Is he like right, right. the chief architect? And then do so I hate get, him? Get, is he yeah. And, and, so you're not really sure what he is or what his role was in all of this or, you know, but it's definitely like, okay, what's going on here? But he's definitely not someone that you, you have very strong feelings about one way or the other. You certainly don't trust him. Um, and then, uh, you know, but then, you know, in the, in the uh, later in the, the, when we see his backstory more, we kind of get to see, we have an understanding that he was just kind of caught in circumstances beyond his control. It was trying like, I don't like this, but I guess we have to do it, whatever. So I like, I personally, I love characters that you feel like as, as an audience, you kind of have, a, you have them locked in, you know who they are. And then you, you get to learn their backstory and you have, and it completely mm -hmm. changes everything you thought you yes. knew about them. Yes. Yeah. It's like inverse growth. It's like, <laughs> Oh, they always were that thing. I just didn't know it until oh, now. They're always terrible. Um, that's oh. a lot of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kara, one of my favorite things that I've heard in hangouts with you was 
one of the fans said, if you could go back and voice, voice a character, like what would you do? And your answer really touched me. You, you know, tell me, t give me. So basically if you could answer that question for the panel, why yeah. did you choose Chihiro as the character that you would go back and do? So, and I, this is a question I get asked all the time. Like if there was one character, I'm sure we all get this question. If there was one character that you could revisit, who would you choose? And my answer has always been Chihiro Fujisaki. And I think I would not change anything about the performance. I think I would do everything the exact same. I understand now the impact that this character has had on the fans. Mm -hmm. And I would love the opportunity to revoice that character and revisit the entire process with that knowledge in my heart that this actually is a groundbreaking character. Um, that I, I would not have realized at the time. Um, but so many people are like, oh, someone who, who makes me feel more normal. Oh, there I am. I'm being represented in yep. anime. Yep. And um, to look back and realize that I had that honor is huge. That's such a, I mean, that's such a wonderful thing when you can look back and go, wow, something that I had a very small part of really did impact people positively. Um, and so I would love the opportunity to voice to hero again, just with that knowledge. And, and what was really cool to me, um, after hearing that answer, all of a sudden I started putting the pieces together and the, 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 the reason you're late to the panel, you had a hangout <laughs> with a person who was cosplaying, right? Tell me you did not <laughs> freak out. I totally freaked out. So yeah, I mean, the reason I was late is I, I had a couple of hangouts and um, and someone actually showed up in cosplay as Chihiro. Um, with and, alter ego. With the alter ego and everything, like every the whole nine yards and, and the yeah. fact that it is Michael, the fact that Michael made, took that time at home to get into the full yeah. cosplay just for cool. our hangout. I'm telling you, made my whole night. Yeah, like, that was, this that's was, awesome. Yeah, that that that's was cool. like again, I, this character is so special, and yep. and I fully recognize how lucky I am to have been given that opportunity. Yep. Um, mm. and and I I can assure you, at the time, um, I just saw him as this like, oh, this is a fun character with a cool twist, and this is going to be great. And I was working with Chris Bevins, who's like one of my favorite humans. And so um, it all just was this really happy experience. And again, when you look back, I'm like, and, and I've been right. lucky. I, I've had a few of those characters in my life that um, that I do make a really big impact on people. And when when you talk to the fans, it's like, oh, cool. That's so neat. It just sits different. So just so the fans know, when you guys come up and say these things to us, like, oh, man, matters. do we store them in our heart? I'm telling oh, you. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. every comment, every yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bryce, this is your characters from Dong and Rampa. I I didn't note it because I'm just like doing administrative work and passing. You know, I'm like, oh, here's another message. Here's a personalized message for Bryce. So here's a personalized message, and it didn't occur to me until I watched Dong and Rampa that all this whole year, people keep talking about this character, and this is where like, what is that? what like what impact has that because sure like conventions might not get it um other other groups of people might not hit, but the fan base for dong and rampa has been so moved by for 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 sure it's explicitly taking place in a high school for sure we know what their ages are like there's so many things that in a lot of animes are ambiguous and we're like left to wonder that they're like, no, we're speaking to you. We we know, and in a lot of ways, it's an allegory hmm. of the high school experience. And you don't pick your high school, right? You show up there, and this group of people that you didn't necessarily choose is now hmm. in there. And then people start sorting themselves into groups. Like it's very, there's a lot behind Dong and Rampa that's happening. And I feel like people are finding hmm. it at the point in their lives where they need it and it speaks to them. Have you had that experience um, with, with this character in particular that, that it, it comes across different, like, I don't know, maybe people are coming up to you and being like, Aaron Yeager is my muse. I don't know. 
<laughs> if someone hey, came up to me and said that Aaron Yeager was their muse, I would run the other way. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, cool. You have fun with that. <laughs> someone said, Aaron, I want to kill them all. <laughs> I still relate to him. <laughs> when you're recording these characters, you never know. Yeah. People are gonna yeah. hear back what you did. Like yeah. you're in this booth by yourself and you pour your heart and yeah. soul into the microphone and you hope people hear it. You hope people relate to it in some way. And it's incredible when it kind of resonates with people deeply. And with a character like Nagito, had no idea that that, that character would, you know, um, connect with people in that way. And, um, also that it would lead to so much insanity on the internet. Um, I, I welcome the memes towards me and thank you guys for sharing that stuff, but I went too far down the rabbit hole, guys. I don't know if I can come back now. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you this, the, the one thing I found, so I, I welcome the memes and, and the, the videos that have been from this. Yeah, I, I, I went down that. And what I found was a video uh, of a commercial of Alexa, but instead of Alexa's voice, it's Nagito talking back. To <laughs> I just want my Alexa to do that. I need to program all my Alexas in the house to respond to me in that way when no, I talk. Don't. Oh, oh wow. my God. If, yeah. You, if you guys haven't seen that video, <laughs> you'll have to look it up and you'll yeah. have a good laugh. It's insanity. Yeah. It's for, insane. for the fans out there, if you don't think Bryce clicks on things, I will tell you one of my <laughs> favorite <laughs> moments of this year, we're doing the sort of online panel and every, you know, like, I think it was in VIP. And so people were like asking and they're like, we had Michelle and Cassandra on and they're like, Oh, Leafa, Leafa, what a, you know? And then Bryce is like, Oh, don't worry. You're fine. You'll be back. And they're <laughs> like, what? Like, how do you, my little... so we get off the panel because Bryce doesn't want to spoil anything. And he's like, everyone Google this thing. And so we type in the search <laughs> and we're like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> so like, I love, I love that Bryce is like, are you are you always like a super research guy? I I mean I hear you guys. I see the comments and I read the comments. I manage all my social media. I I am the worst at responding to people, so <laughs> I apologize. I'm looking at the comments now. I definitely watched Nagito Kumaida on the Nintendo DS. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still don't understand what it means, but it's <laughs> and you know what, guys? If you're thinking that I'm the cat in the Friskies commercial, that's <laughs> on me. I'm not that cat, but everyone thinks I am, and I think it's hilarious. Oh man! Even though I'm telling you I'm not the cat, keep spreading the word that that's because <laughs> <what I'm laughs> then you can book really a really really funny. Funny. Sorry to yeah. disappoint. I oh, wish dude, I was yeah. the cat, and and I played the cat as Nagito, but keep spreading <laughs> the word that's the Nagito cat. That's how, commercial. yeah. That's how to get Bryce royalties on a commercial. Josh, you said that you've been doing a, a more commercials this year than previous. Have you been booking some commercial stuff? Yeah, yeah. This year was the was uh, kind of ridiculous for me. Like, really, the thing that has kind of gotten me through 2020 was I I became the voice of Six Flags for all of North America oh, back in like nice, May or something. Nice. So like, yeah, it's it's been really great. Like, they've I don't know, you know you know, what's going to happen, you know, after the new yeah. year, they, they may not re-sign me or, or something, but just the fact that I got to, to do that for a little while and it got me through the worst of mm. this, yeah. uh, uh, I will forever be grateful. Yeah. It's, it's been a pretty awesome year for that in terms of commercial. So no, if you, you find anything? yourself at Six Flags sometime in the near future, keep an ear out. No, that's yeah. so awesome. You might hear me telling you to go get food. <laughs> oh, man. Now, have you done any like training manuals this year have you done any training manuals oh yeah no i but i had to do the voice of all like the hiring stuff for them so like yeah. which is kind of sad because they just laid off a bunch of people oh. so i don't know if the hiring thing that i voiced is playing anywhere now but um <laughs> uh, but when the world comes goes. back you'll help <laughs> you'll help new hires you know, come to... back. exactly maybe it was a seasonal layoff who knows oh, but yeah yeah well, it's, uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's definitely been a really cool experience like uh i haven't really done a lot of commercial up until this point so 
Yeah, it's been a very, very cool. learning experience. All right, Kara, tell us about something you did this year that you you did not see at the start of 2020 that you were going to do that thing this year. Oh God! Um, so actually, kind of, kind of like Josh, uh, this my my big thing this year is I've been doing the I've, I've been the regional um, tag voice for all of the Lazy Boy commercials. Woo! Nice, so, hey, nice. Um, so, yeah, tons of retail. Uh, I kind of had this weird. My year was a little bit different because I I've done a lot of commercial work. Um, in in my that's that's been the bulk of the work that I have done. So the week of lockdown, I actually saw all of my clients disappear. Every one of my sessions was canceled. Everything Oof. went away. Um, Lazy Man. Boy kept me. Thank you, Lazy Boy. Um, and Everyone go buy a Lazy everything, Boy. Yeah, thanks. Uh, everything switched <laughs> over to COVID commercials. And so I did a series mm -hmm. of, like, I was the voice in New York. If anybody's listening in New York, I was the one that was telling you, like, Hey, this could really affect our grandparents. So why don't we all stay home? Really? Um, oh, yeah, yeah I, was, I was the one doing nice. that. So I did a ton of healthcare spots, ton of um, that type of thing. Uh, but it, it's just been this kind of weird, wonky year. Uh, I've yeah. been really happy that I do a lot of English language learning, which is uh, I work for Highlights Magazine, the children's magazine, and um, and so I help I help children and all over the world actually learn how to speak English. Um, and, and I've been really grateful that all of that's continued. But yeah, now I'm kind of slowly starting to see where companies are opening up and um, like the web videos and commercials and some things are finally starting to to look a little more normal out there. But yeah, this has just been a weird year all the way around. Some things that have come in that I'm like, cool, well, I'm happy to have that. And other things I'm like, well, I'm going to miss that. A lot. Yeah. It's been All weird. right. Uh, Michael, what's the, what's the thing that you've done this year, Michael, that you're like, man, I wouldn't have said I was going to do that this year. Moving. <laughs> <laughs> you just moved to LA. That's crazy. I just moved to LA. Yeah. Everybody uh, moved to LA. I feel like everyone in Dallas packed up and moved to LA. You know? I know. And what do you people I just doing? got here in time to see everyone else leaving. It's weird. <laughs> oh, um, weird. It's like they're just trading places. Um, That's so weird. If I'd have known that, I would just call people like, hey, do you just want our apartment as is? What's your oh, right? Like, right? Right? trades? No no um, yeah, no, when when the shortly before the pandemic um, started, certainly before the lockdown, uh, my husband and I, Brandon, we invested in um, this really a, a, just a pro grade home setup because Brandon does a lot of music stuff, as do I. And we wanted to just have like, we're like, let's just do it. Let's just do it. It's why not? It's an expense, but let's just have a really great home set, like have a dedicated studio in our before, home. It's just like in January, yeah, this was January? before. Woo! Yeah, so, so, so there's, you know, a se literally a section of our, our house that was just the studio, nothing else. And uh, and we're lucky, I say, that that happened because, you know, we had a good setup. And when home recording became the new thing, we suddenly found ourselves getting a lot of work because um, it was just easier to, to yep. get us. And... Um, Included and for some reason I started getting a lot of work with LA studios and after that's so we're like I guess maybe we should move out to LA. I've been I've been wanting to do it um, for a while I guess I've just been kind of thinking about it for the past couple of years and I guess I just waited for a pandemic to be like now yeah, seems yeah. like a good time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it actually was, does that, seem like it is a good time to start yeah. doing these transitions because we are all working yep. from home right now. Yeah. So there's yeah, yeah. not this. Um, it doesn't feel like there's this giant like, uh, oh no, what's this studio going to do? It's like, well, they can actually do what they're you're doing here over yep. there. Exactly. Um, so I think exactly. it's a good, like, I'm excited for you guys. Yeah. And it's good because the home recording, we still get to record, you know, with Funimation and with all our uh -huh. Texas clients and stuff. So none of that has changed. And it's just, we get to be in, in a new place. I've, I've been wanting kind of a change of scenery for a little while now, but I never thought I'd actually do it. I'd never thought I'd actually get off my butt and make it happen. And yeah. We did. So here we are. So that, that's, that's certainly awesome. something I would not have expected of myself. Um, but it but it happened. So wish us luck. I just, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to get through all these boxes. Nothing humbles you. <laughs> like looking at your life packed into boxes yeah. with Sharpie labels going, man, what about, why do I even have this? Why did I hold on yes. to this? Why do I have three coffee makers? Throw I, it all out. Where did, the, where did the other two come from? It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. So it's now is the process of like the movers just came today. So I'm like juggling all this while we're moving. And, uh, but now it's just kind of in, in a forest of like, here, I'll just show you here. This is why do I'm it. on my phone and yeah. on my computer. Cause we just got in it two hours ago. Um, 
Like this is this is our this is the studio right now. Um, wow, nice. Is there yeah. already carpet down? It looks like you already have a rug down. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> oh I'm a 45 year old gay man. Um, <laughs> Yeah. You know, so. hey, hey, Michael, if you need if you need something to do with all of those boxes, I'm on my phone because my internet just went down two hours ago. Um, but oh. I, I'm actually planning. I'm actually. I have a. Oh, that's Halloween, right. Your carnival. Um. Yeah, I'm throwing a Halloween carnival for two kids tomorrow. It's so all I'm handmade using, stuff, you guys. It's all anime. I'm using all of my yeah. Amazon boxes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! You know what? I will get through these in the next 24 hours. Can you send them my way? And I'll just hot shot them your way. I'm sure I could just FedEx them. They'll get there in like 30 minutes, right? It's fine. Oh, I've been painting uh... Amazon boxes for the past four hours. I love it. You guys are so okay, Bryce. What's one thing that you've done this year that you just could not have seen coming? Um wow, I, I didn't uh so unlike Tatum, I I had not built out a professional studio. <laughs> So I had to quickly adapt. And right before the pandemic hit, um, I was lucky enough to be invited out to Australia because um, there's an event out there called Madman Anime Fest. And all oh, yeah. these guests had to cancel last second. So the week of the event, they messaged me and said, want to come to Australia? And I'm like, yes, I do. Definitely. <laughs> so I went to Australia, had an amazing time at the event, uh, flew back home after, and there was no toilet paper. Um, oh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were not prepared. Um, and I had not built out, um, my, my Was studio had to very quickly adapt. So, um, I repurposed my closet, um, into a recording booth as you do when you need yep. something that's just going to yep. work. It's yep. pretty good, but I never expected to be talking to myself in a show from my closet. <laughs> you recall that, that I would be, you know, fighting with myself in my closet for hours on end. <laughs> you did the, you did the seven more. deadly sins stuff, right? The oh, yeah. Had, yeah. Seven That's deadly awesome. sins and something else I can't talk about Ooh. yet. I'm fighting with myself in that too. And I, I can't yes. wait for you guys to see it. I love talking to myself and fighting with myself, especially when it's in my closet. Hashtag NWA, <laughs> NDA, get it, baby. Okay. So I have to, I have to throw out kudos really quick because Bryce sure. talking about this. Um, I, because again, I said like this is having the home studio was something that there was no transition for me. However, mm. I because of of what my fiance does, he, I got like this kind of backdoor window into watching so many people like, like Bryce who, with right. literally no yep. notice, yep. had to put together an entire home studio and. A lot of it was, at least from my end, and Bryce, I don't know how you were doing it, but from a lot of the stuff I saw, it was people learning how, actors having to learn how to engineer in ways yep. that I yep. have never done before. Yeah. That yeah. were really yeah. complicated. Oh. A lot of times on yeah. iPads with programs that were insane and sitting back and watching from all the different levels of how everybody just jumped in feet first and were like, you know what? We're gonna just make this happen. If I have to like start stapling mattresses to a wall, like that's what I'm gonna do. And everybody figured it out, and it it was a remarkable. Like I I was really proud of everyone in our industry to like, all right, dude, let's do cool. this, man. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. keep working. It was so great to see that. It really, in some ways, even though we've all been isolated from each other for these past thousand years, however long 2020 has been. In some ways, like, because we all have that experience of having to sort of hit the ground running yeah. and like make make a microphone out of an avocado go. Um, <laughs> so no, really, that though. We, it's kind of brought us all closer, you know. And I tell yeah. you, it's it's certainly yeah. uh, it's certainly opened our eyes into just how much a good engineer is worth their yeah. weight in gold. Oh my yeah. god! We're like, this is hard. Why? And then I'm like, I'm so sorry for every time every, I've been yeah, a every diva. Did this to you. <laughs> I like. I, I always felt like I had to apologize because I have, while I have been recording from home, I like. I mean, this right over here is I have the booth and everything. I had never done anime from home. Oh yeah. And so oh, oh, I was lucky because oh. I have a built-in engineer, and so like he could come, Zach could come in and and engineer the sessions for me. And I almost felt like I had to apologize every time because it's like <laughs> I know I'm really lucky. I recognize that no one else has this. I so have privilege. I just, I'm me. sorry. I'm really sorry that this has been easier on me. 
I I think that was really pretty profound what you just said though, Michael, about um I think for the for the first time in our in our, you know, I'm 41, various ones of you are in your 40s and 30s. <laughs> for the first time in our lifetimes, we're all on the same page. We've never mm. like we we all came into a world that was post Vietnam, post World Wars, post Post, 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 post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, women have the right to vote. Black people have the right to vote. Like, and as a, as a species, we had never been kind of like leveled and put on an even playing field. And I feel like for the first time, we're all going through the same thing. And that, yeah. that kind of like shared experience has never, it's never been available to us. And I feel like I'm, I'm super grateful. Like I, I was on the road for 47 out of 52 weeks away from my family, mm -hmm. away from my wife, away. From, and, and it's, it's the first baby. We have a, a one-year-old and he's, this is his world. Like he came into mm -hmm. and he, he's grown up and he's become a person like in this. And it's been, it's been cool to like, that's like, man, oh, look, somebody needs to feed him. Like, I'm going to stop this 100-hour work week that I'm in the middle of and, like, just sit down and, like, feed my my baby, like, stuff that I'm, you know, it's like. <laughs> yeah. it, those, are, those are the things that I think are going to be, like, for me, having the kiddos here doing school. Um, and my studio is a separate building, so I can be in here working and just look out the window or know that they're in the house and act like getting to actively participate yep. in their schooling for the first time. Yeah. Um, like I, I'm already figuring out how we can do this like through college. Cause <laughs> I don't want it to end. <laughs> I love being here. Working out of my closet, my kids get to be in my work also because they're as loud as I yeah. am. Right. <laughs> okay. them, even though yeah. they're all the way very, very far away, as much padding as I could buy, it's not gonna stop those no, guys. No, it doesn't well, I mean, stop it. They come by it honestly, so of course they're gonna be <laughs> yeah, right. The yeah. of those kids are gonna yeah. be phenomenal. Oh man. <laughs> guys, it has been so good. I never want panels to end. It's always such a good time. Uh let's let's do parting shots. Get <clears throat> some most of you have a break. Hopefully behind the, the wall, they're all working furiously. I see emails coming in. So um, be sure to check in, check your emails when we get off here to see like, um, you know, am I, do you have a break or is there something? Um, and then everybody, there's tomorrow. For, um, Bryce is the only one that isn't available. <clears throat> a bunch of us Ooh. have kids. So Kara and Bryce have Halloween extravaganza. <laughs> I have giant boxes in my house also. Yes! That, that are the best place. They're Look at this community. We all have boxes. We all have I'm boxes in our you, places man. right yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> boxes unite. No, Novin, do you want to bring over part of your tank? Novin, so Novin, see, Kara, I told you that mine do this, do it to me too. You're all oh, like, yeah. what, what happens if my kid, I'm like, don't worry, my kid's going to do it too. <laughs> I know, I did. I warned him. I was like, okay, until Zach gets here, man, like there's a good chance a five-year-old's going to do something weird. <laughs> so no Novin, Novin goes on the internet and like, he's like, I saw this, uh, I saw this transformer made out of cardboard. So we're like, we're in the middle <laughs> of like making a Megatron Transformers. <laughs> So I too am in the box club. Um, so we're okay, gonna, okay. That's, you that's give me an idea, night. you guys. Instead of like a jack o' lantern, I'm just gonna carve faces in all these boxes, <laughs> the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. and just Perfect. put them out front. And like, yeah. I don't just don't put candles Maybe. in them. Don't oh, put candles in them. But I really want to burn it all. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just I really them. want to burn it all. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, um, so what? What is? Uh, what do you guys want to point attention to? What do you want to direct to? Um, I, I will start, Kara, by pulling up your website, and then we'll go Kara, Michael, Bryce, and Josh. And you guys be thinking mm -hmm. of what it is that you want to direct people's attention to on the internet. Um, and then I'll, I'll use the power of technology to... <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Why is your web... I, we got to work on your SEO. I was thinking your website, isn't it yourname.com? <laughs> It's KaraEdwards.com. That's what I thought. Why that's are you? That's if you're like to... wanting to hire me. That's nothing exciting on there, though. That's super exciting. Um, Let's hire I do, you. I do have a website if, if anyone that has like some like prints and stuff like that, if someone wants to go check that out. And you can get to it from KaraEdwards.com. Um, oh, it's a different one. 
Yeah, shopcaraedwards.com. It's all, but it's it's okay. easy. Or you could just go to Color World because they got all the cool stuff too. Yeah, um, cool. yeah. So, but yeah, there's. I mean, promoting stuff. I mean, keep watching anime. We're we're all working on so many great things, and stuff is happening. And I would sit here and name things, but I I have no idea what I'm allowed to talk about. Not to talk about so I'm just gonna say, keep watching anime. Keep <laughs> and we love anime, you guys. We love and you, guys. you may hear Kara, and I love that. It's oh, like yeah, look, that's me and my kid. Um, hey. did you, did you <laughs> wear the, this big? Did you wear those shoes? I feel like there was a, a brand of running shoes like called Esprit when I was growing up, and your font for your name is like literally their logo, but just your name instead of Oh god, that's funny. I I'm great. Thinking, I that you just told me I just paid someone a whole lot of money to rip someone off. Oh, I mean that's it's fantastic. super original. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Super original, ignore everything. I, all right. So, Michael, how can I ruin your day? Ah, oh, no, you you can't anymore. Um, <laughs> it's not possible. No, um, I'll just. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday to help me with these boxes, Brad. Thank you for driving all the way. Down. Oh, really, heck really yeah! Appreciate that I'll help. tell you what, man. I'm be blow. It, as soon as I know that you're serious, my whole day is going to be spent driving to Los Mother Angeles, California. <laughs> I'll be lifting some boxes. Oh my god, you're adorable. Um, no, you know, Jamie and I uh, have been doing the oh, yes. Legends podcast uh -huh. podcast now for two years, and uh -huh. we're going strong. So those of you that have not uh, joined or or given us a listen, please do. It's basically Jamie and I doing what we do when we get together anyway, telling ghost stories and scaring the the bejesus out of each other. Yes. And uh, so please, please join, listen. Also, I'll, I'm in a lot of projects I can't talk about just yeah. yet. Some of them being done in LA. <laughs> um, okay, so good. yeah, yeah, give it, uh, just don't worry. We'll, I'll, I'll, as soon as I figure this whole internet thing out, I'll tell everyone. Okay, okay, cool. All right, Bryce, where are we going on the internet? Where do you want to direct people's attention? Um, well, I mean, uh, like everyone else, there's lots of things going on that I can't talk about, but one mm -hmm. thing I and talk about is Sword Art Online. Uh, the last piece of Alicization War of Underworld hits Toonami next weekend. So uh, definitely check that out. I uh, My character might just wake up and uh, be back in the battle. So I'm very excited about um, that. Um, also, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thank you to everyone who, um, you know, grabbed a hangout, an autograph, a voice recording, any, you know, Thank you guys for joining us here at Color World, Brad, and really appreciate you, you know, producing these things and giving us a, a, some semblance of conventions um, during this time. Really miss going to conventions, so I'm I'm glad that we can all hang out here. Um, so thanks, thanks so much to that, and yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll announce as much as I can on Twitter and Instagram at Bryce Pappenbrook when. I can. Uh, I don't know when that is. I love that. All so many NDAs right now. There's just so much. <laughs> right. Gosh, what do you want to? What do you want to hint at? <laughs> you... uh, sadly, all I've got is a bunch of uh, can't talk about it right now. Oh. Uh, we'll, see 20, we'll see what 2021 brings, but uh, got some irons in the fire for now. Uh, just find me at uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, just at Josh Greeley. Uh, I'll be making some announcements uh, probably in the next week or so about some stuff i'm, I'm gonna try to do some streaming just to because there's nothing else i can do right now yes. you know <laughs> yeah. so uh be on the lookout for that and uh, any other announcements and yeah get get your butts to six flags but wear your masks yeah don't go here <laughs> yes wear your masks I, I now that you said that josh i do i i think it is seasonal i would imagine like it's it already in the 30s and 40s out here in Iowa, you guys. So, like, mm -hmm. I, I don't think people are going to theme parks right now in the... Yeah, they've just got uh, their Christmas light thing going on, and that's oh, probably about it anyway, so... That'd be cool. Okay, so yeah. go see some Christmas lights. Don't stand next to the person closest to you and wear your mask. Uh, yeah. Well, sweet. <laughs> guys, gals, thank you. Thank you all so much. Uh, all right, you guys. Have your break, you. and I'll see you guys in VIP, everybody. Well, I'm going to jump, and we get to answer all your questions.